Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is uh, Jimmy from uh, Cruise FM, and welcome to the Jedi Jimmy podcast. As you may know, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, and I have my own podcast, and this is exactly that. Today, I am doing a total breakdown and review of Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. First of all, the original release of Return of the Jedi was May 25th, 1983. That was 41 years ago. The box office was $182.5 million worldwide. The budget was $32.5 million. And when this movie first came out, I was nine years old. I saw it at a theater in Lethbridge, and it was actually one of my first movies that I saw with some friends in a theater without my parents. And now the special edition was released March 7th, 1997. Um, I was still living in Tabor at that point. And the special edition box office was $89.38 million. Now, the timeline, this movie actually took place four years after A New Hope. So in the Star Wars timeline, how they look at it, it's called uh, ABY, After the Battle of Yavin. If you don't know what the Battle of Yavin is, that's the first Death Star. Okay, so characters. Jabba's Palace. One thing I noticed is there was a Doug that looked exactly like Sebulba from Episode One: Phantom Menace. And the the thing with it is that it was special edition. There was a little bit more to it, but it also reintroduced Jabba the Hutt. He was bigger than in A New Hope, as well as in A New Hope, he was actually CGI. In this one, he was a puppet. So Lando Calrissian was dressed up as a spy in Jabba's palace, There was a little bit of a character discrepancy. Obi-Wan said that he thought he could train Anakin as good as Yoda trained him. But Yoda actually refused to train Anakin as a Jedi in The Phantom Menace because he feared for uh, where he could possibly go. His future was clouded. And also, when the movie came out, I actually had a huge crush on Princess Leia, played by Carrie Fisher. Not just gold bikini, but actually on Endor. I was really a fan of her hairstyle, and she was a very pretty woman. And now the battle scenes. They were more extensive on this movie than on any of the other movies. Actually, even into the sequels later on, I'll explain. First, the fight uh, to free Han on Jabba's barge was awesome. The lightsaber fights and all that kind of stuff. The space battle in Endor. The rebel fleet against the the Star Destroyers and the Super Star Destroyers. But the Death Star 2 was involved where it was blowing up some of the motherships. Some of the bigger of the rebel fleet. And the rebel troop fight on Endor. Han Solo, Princess Leia led the, the troops Uh, With the help of the Ewoks, the Ewoks were actually really cool characters. The fun thing about the Ewoks, actually, they were all played by little people, one of which was Warwick Davis, who later went on to play on Willow. In that movie, he was actually 13 years old when he started filming, and the battles were awesome. They had the Stormtroopers and the ATSTs, so the the, uh, two-leg walkers, as well as... The uh, speeder bikes. Now, let's get into the lightsaber duels. This was probably my favorite part of the movie. First, it was really cool how R2-D2 launched Luke's lightsaber to him on the barge. And he caught it in a flip and did all the fancy moves. He was using a very messy uh, version of Form 3. Again, he didn't actually have a teacher to teach him how to use the lightsaber. Uh, he probably he was using the journals and the books that he got from Obi Wan because Obi Wan had a journal in which also taught him how to make a lightsaber. That's how Luke made his new lightsaber, the green one. And there's one part 
on the barge that made no sense to me was he was using Form 3 and 5, but when he got shot in the hand, his hand had no reason to be up there. I could not figure out any reason why he did. He wasn't swinging at anyone. He wasn't defending up high. Made no sense. The Luke versus uh, Vader on Death Star 2, they were both proficient in the forms that they were using. They were using forms 5 and 6 in defense and counterattacks and just full-out attacks. The odd time, it looked a little dirty how they were kind of just hitting blades for the sake of it. But the part where Vader throws his lightsaber to take out the bridge that Luke's standing on was a move that's used in the video games. And when Luke rages on Vader, there's some similarities between the techniques he used and the techniques that Anakin used when fighting against Dooku in Episode 3. And, but one part, when Luke's hitting Vader's lightsaber over and over again, was a little overkill, because he could have taken his arm a lot easier. Now, let's rank the lightsabers uh, battles. I gave it a 4 out of 6. Uh, it's better than the uh, previous two movies, but not as good as the prequels. So I gave it four out of six, one being really good, three or six being bad. And the special effects, as I said, Jabba was mostly puppet, but there was some special edition, some CGI added in a little bit. The documentary actually shows that the puppet was originally run by three people. Also, the Rancor was mostly puppet, but the Rancor in the Book of Boba Fett was was all CGI. And the Sarlacc was cooler in the special edition because it there was a lot of CGI where you can see the beak, the tentacles, all that kind of stuff. The lightsaber rankings, as I said, I gave it a four out of six, one being good, four being bad. So it's better than the original three films. And my personal ranking, I gave it a two out of six, one being the best, six being the worst. The next movie I will be doing will be Star Wars Episode One. That is A Phantom Menace. See you then. 